Tin Soldier, yep. Simeon Green. Yeah. I hear rumours that it might be a, a certified variety soon, perhaps? Yeah. Or? yeah. So there's very few bottlings of straight Semillon Gris mm -hmm. in, the, in the Cape. Uh, one of the issues we've had is just with uh, Savas and the Wine Spirits Board actually recognizing it as a distinct varietal. Uh, the Mullineaux have kind of crossed the line there and now have a registered Semillon Gris vineyard. So we've kind of started that bureaucratic process. So Semillon Gris is a natural mutation of Semillon Blanc. So it's pink skinned rather than you know, than, than black skin. So mm -hmm. it does, this, what the color that you're seeing in the glass here is, you know, this is a little bit of skin contact, but we're really not getting a huge amount of color out of the wine. So it's, it's very, it's from blush to sort of pink rose skinned. Okay. Um, and there's just not an awful lot of it left in the Western Cape. So this vineyard, this is, we're going to taste two semions now. This is the daughter vineyard. So the cuttings for this vineyard come from the older vineyard, which we'll taste next. Uh, so this is 100% Semillon Gris on granite soils in the Paderberg. The oldest part of this vineyard is about nine years old now. Uh, and yeah, the, the wine itself has seen quite a lot of evolution uh, since we first made this in 2013. So we used to do a lot more skin contact, it used to be a lot more rustic and you know, defined by being a skin contact wine. And just over the years, I've just dialed down the skin contact. So we still do about seven to 10 days on half of the wine and the rest is whole bunch pressed. Mm -hmm. So we've got a very delicate texture, some nice color from that, but I think this is a very good space because you know, we've got this lovely citrus expression of the wine and then that sort of textural element from the from the skin contact. Ten years ago there was far fewer skin contact wines yeah. uh, being made in South Africa. What what wines were sort of in, inspirations to you to create this wine? Yeah, I, d I think definitely in Europe there was a there was a big uh, it was very very fashionable. Um, so I think when we started it, I think there was an you know an element of you know running with the fashion a little bit. Uh, I'd never, I think someone asked me earlier, you know, when we first made these wines, I'd never made wines in these style in my life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, really in 13, you know, really pushing the boat out and trying new things. Um, and I think, I think that's the benefit of 10 years is that we've lived with the wines and the winemaking decisions that we've made. And yeah, and incrementally improved to where I think my winemaking is more in line with my palate, mm. you know, and I think that's, you know, we've never, we've never done the 180 degree turn, but we've certainly incrementally improved on, well, I think improved, I hope yeah. improved. No, very cool. Yeah. And I mean, what, what, what are you trying to extract from, with the skin contact? What, what, what why are you getting only half it? What's the perception? Why are you getting all yeah, of it? Is, it, is it? is it too textural? Is it too? I think if you go, too much on the skin contact, the, um, the skin extraction can sit on the wine and make it quite dumb and rustic for a lot of, a lot of time. We recently opened, during the harvest, we opened a lot of older bottles for our interns that work for, for us. And we opened a 13 of this wine and it was extremely earthy and, and, and rustic when it was first bottled. Mm. Um, but you know, 10 years later, you know, you've got this amazing, clear, bright fruit you know, and that sort of rusticity has fallen away, but it's mm. taken 10 years. Yeah. And, you know, if you talk about an, you know, an Attic icon wine, was that Radicon from, from Italy, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the first, you know, sort of cult skin contact wines. And our Norwegian importer brings that in. And I've also tasted that with sort of 10, 12 years of age, and it's wonderful. But the wines are very rustic when they're young, you know, so. so, okay, so. Presumably some varieties are better used yeah, yeah. And I think like with Semyon, no, I, when I say I hadn't made skin contact whites before starting this, I had dabbled, you know, at my previous jobs and all that. And I found Chenin and Chardonnay have quite a neutral tannin that doesn't, for me, doesn't really improve the wine. You know what I mean? They're quite sort of blocky, neutral tannins. Whereas like I've worked with Claret and Semyon with Skin Contact and they've got very soft, fine powdery tannins. So yeah, I think as far as white varietals that I've worked with for Skin Contact, Semyon for me 
is one of the ones that has a, a, a lovely tannin structure. Mm. And especially as it ripens, I think Semyon stays very green in the skins and can be very hard. Yep. And then one of the tipping points on ripeness is when that, that skin tannin softens, like when you're chewing the grapes, you can taste that softness yeah, right, okay. develop. Yeah. I mean, it's a crazy one. I mean, it's so complex. It has yeah. complexity in obviously aromatics and flavors, but also in textures, yeah. which is yeah. uh, super yeah, interesting. Yeah. I mean, everything from sort of like ginger and spice to almost like a like an amaro type of yeah. you know uh, yeah. herbal edge to it, and some citrus, yeah. and the cheese rind, and a bit of salty <laughs> you know cheese rind yeah. action. Parmesan it's, rind. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it's it, it, it seems less fruit driven than yeah. previous vintages. Yeah. It's much more savory. Yeah. Would you, would you yeah, agree yeah. with that? No, and no, I think yeah. that's that's quite a positive for me. It was you know working in restaurants in the UK, I worked with some Italians, and they had a big appreciation for things that were not ostensibly sweet. You know what I mean? And I I think especially on the table, I do like these kind of wine. And that's one of the things I like about Semyon, especially this old kernel material. It doesn't have bags of upfront fruit that's yeah, easy yeah. to access. Mm -hmm. It almost needs to be on the table to work with other things, you know, mm -hmm. to, uh, to bring out those sort of fruit flavors. And, you know, for me, wine does sit on the table, you know, it's an appetite stimulant, it's supposed to clean and stimulate your palate, mm -hmm. your digestion and all that sort of thing, you know, without being too medicinal about it. Yes. But, you know, I think sometimes we've lost that appreciation in, you know, I think a lot of commercial wines chase a lot of sweetness. Mm -hmm you know, along with a lot of other commercial drinks. You know, a friend of mine was trying to make a health drink based around blueberry leaves, but he says, you don't understand how much sugar is generally in soft drinks. And if you're not at that level, people are like, oh, it doesn't taste very good. Yeah. You know, so I think, it's yeah. It's bitter. And, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, but I, I think that's been part of my aesthetic and my palate is I like wines that are not ostensibly fruity or mm. sweet, you know, and I think Semyon fits that, that mold. Also, they're sort nice. of gastronomically relevant yeah. wines. Yeah. They work with food yeah. and different types of food. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, this, this wine and sort of oily fish is a, is a really yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or we were saying, it, it is a very flexible wine in terms of, because it, you know, it is fruity, it is spicy, it yeah. is salty, it is full body yeah, and yeah. also quite light and fresh at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So it does, it does um, tick a lot of boxes, but... Uh, and you can do like a tempura with a dip, you know, that, that mm. kind of, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, lends itself. 